oh come, Emmanuel, oh come, oh day spring come, and cheer our spirits by your advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to flight. A favourite Advent hymn, well certainly uh, one of mine. The Advent we celebrate as people of faith, the one that's nothing at all to do with how many days or shopping days there are left till Christmas. We journey as we put up our Christmas trees, we sing our carols, the lighting of the Advent ring, all these things invite us to dream dreams of a better world. To allow expectation, to allow visions, to take time to appreciate Advent season and the coming of the Son of God. Each year during this season of Advent, the church sets off on a journey. We begin to prepare our hearts and our minds for the coming of the Christ child, so that this time you have a proper place to be born. And we think we know the way to Bethlehem. We can find it on the map. It's not far from Jerusalem by today's standards. Shouldn't be a problem. But this year, it's been very different. We have travelled it, and in that travelling, we have lost loved ones to this virus. We have stood on doorsteps and clapped our frontline workers. We have been confined to our homes. Our churches have been closed. We have not traveled and are not traveling this advent as we would have expected to do way back on the 23rd of March at the first lockdown. And the problem is that so much has changed since we last visited the manger. A whole year has passed. A year that's brought many changes to our lives. Some of them good, even through the two lockdowns. Some things not so good. Some of them heartbreaking. The geographic map of our lives have changed. So maybe we could use a little help in finding our way to Bethlehem this year. That's it. That is, if you still want to go. I know I do. I can't wait to get back to church and to lead worship. I can't wait to get in the queue two metres apart to, to, to get my vaccine. I can't wait for life to get back to normal, whatever it might look like. To see my family and my friends, to give them a hug and to tell them in person that I love them. In Advent, of course, we encounter John the Baptist. We can't get to Bethlehem in Advent without our encountering him and the desert. I don't know if you've ever been to the desert. It's not very hospitable at all. It's barren. It's arid. It's hot. It's like nothing you've ever experienced in other context. It's just sand and heat and it stretches out for miles and miles. And it seems when you're in it, it goes on forever. A bit like this year, perhaps. We all have desert places in our lives. Sometimes when they crop up, we least expect them to. They come unannounced out of the blue and we have to use all our resources to deal with the situation, whatever it is. Ill health, death of a family member or a close friend, loss of our job, being made redundant, closure of our church, not being able to worship together or be in fellowship. Home teaching our children, being furloughed, working from home. These things and much more, you might feel personally like this is a desert time. When we've got to hold on to the hand of God who is with us in our desert experience. Since March, not just in April, it may have felt like some that it's a desert experience. But we are encouraged to travel to Bethlehem, holding the hand of God, holding on sometimes for dear life, but nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And it's holding on to the hand of God as we approach and take 
tentative steps to look inside and see in the manger the hope for the world. Why? Because God is faithful and worthy and just and God walks with us. Even if we can't gather in person in our churches, Emmanuel, God is with us. Even if some of our Christian traditions we have had to let go this year, Emmanuel, God is with us. Even if we might not get to see our family and friends, Emmanuel, God is with us. Even if we can't sing our carols beside each other, Emmanuel, God is with us. Even if Christmas cheer is harder this year than normal, Emmanuel, God is with us. Hello everybody. I know we're all going to miss singing our favourite Christmas carols this year, aren't we? One of my favourite lines comes in O Little Town of Bethlehem. The third verse starts, how silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. For me, it captures the humble beginnings of Jesus, born in social isolation, away from home, in a stable to a bewildered young couple and the first person to see him are some shepherds who happen to be one of the most marginalised and despised groups of people in Israel. There is no favouritism here. Jesus begins life without privilege or position. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. Now perhaps one small benefit to the current situation is that this year we will need to strip away all of the trappings of our church celebrations and go back once more to the simplicity of the birth stories. Perhaps this year, in a certainly more muted celebration, we might find time to remember that whilst the church can too often be focused in on itself, the world remains broken. Children just like Jesus continue to be born into poverty and the church can seemingly be looking elsewhere. But when we go back to the beginning, when we find Jesus coming as a powerless baby, the wondrous gift offers to us in a manger in Bethlehem, we find Jesus coming to us as a light shining in the darkness, helping us when we cannot see which way to turn. We find Jesus bringing peace to all people in a world of violence and division. We find hope in the midst of our despair, we find how silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. My prayer is that each of us will know this wondrous gift deep in our hearts once again this Christmas time. Amen. Christmas greetings to you. I'm the Reverend Kate Strange, one of the newly appointed Deputy Chairs living in the Derbyshire side of the district with my husband Paul and our five animals. As we travel closer to Bethlehem and there are whispers on the wind and Mary sings, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. What do our souls magnify and in what do our spirits rejoice this year in these strange times when nothing feels normal? when many of us feel lost, lonely and afraid, unsure of what Christmas will bring, let alone the hope of a new year. And so again, I ask, what do our souls magnify? In what do our spirits rejoice? For us here at the Hollies, the house in which we live, it often feels a little bit like a stable. We have our five animals who often make appearances at Zoom meetings they all have their own quirky little ways. We also have eight grandchildren and our youngest has special needs. The animals seem to have a special relationship with him. I don't understand it, but I watch in awe with them, with him. And I wonder, 
I wonder if on that first night when Jesus appeared that people just knew that he was special, that he was different in some way and that they just couldn't understand it. During lockdown I've drawn closer to God or is it that God has drawn closer to me? I'm not quite sure. My spirit rejoices every time I hear one of the children laugh or every time the dog pulls me out into the cold for a walk or the cats jump on my knee and I stroke them or my husband makes me laugh when I've lost my smile. These are some of the ways in which we have found our way of getting through these difficult and challenging times. And so I ask you again, in what do our spirits magnify and what do our souls rejoice? God is with us this Christmas time. He's with each and every one of us. He's with us through the friend, through the partner, through the baby, through the stranger. He's in the word, the prayer, the song. He's with us through Zoom, through a window, through a card, through the telephone. Friends, we will be together again. We are the light carriers in the darkness. The darkness cannot put us out. Stay strong for each other. I wish you all a peaceful Christmas and a happy and healthy New Year. So let's hold on to that hope and may God bless you and keep you precious children of God so that you may know his presence in your hearts this Advent and Christmas time. Amen.